now more than ever, the world could use a laugh. If you are anything like us, you were probably thinking what movie I should watch. Don't worry, we got you covered. Welcome back to Film Shack. Today, we prepared for you the 10 best comedy movies of all time. Number 10, Coming to America. America is great indeed. Imagine a country so free, one can throw glass on the streets. You must be out of your goddamn Coming to America centers around pampered African prince Akeem, Eddie Murphy, heir to the throne and fabulous riches. He's reached marriageable age, and his parents have found him a suitable bride. But Akeem wants a woman who loves him for what he is, not what he has. And he travels to America with his valet, Semi, Arsenio Hall, to find his soulmate. Despite some sexist and racist quirks, Coming to America comes through as a funny trip back to the comedy stylings of 1988. Murphy and Hall play multiple roles in the movie, and certainly Murphy was in his prime. Some sexist and lurid overtones are cringeworthy, but it's small potatoes compared to the fat-suited Eddie Murphy of today. Number 9. Beverly Hills Cop a man who claims to be on vacation, you look a lot like you're on a stakeout. Stakeout? No, no. I'm picnicking. This is like a picnic area. Detroit police officer Axel Foley, Eddie Murphy, experiences a severe case of culture shock when clues in the murder of his good friend lead him to Beverly Hills. Put under the watchful eyes of two Beverly Hills cops, Judge Reinhold and John Ashton, the maverick outsider infuriates his superiors and rattles the ritzy city with his wildly unorthodox detective skills. But Axel's entertaining antics expose the truth about Victor Maitland, a British art dealer who turns out to be the crime king who killed Foley's friend. It all comes down to an on-the-edge-of-your-seat shootout at Maitland's Beverly Hills mansion. The soundtrack is definitive of cheesy 1980s pop. However, the film stands above many subsequent action comedies. The look of it is impeccable, creating a time capsule of Beverly Hills' excess. Also, the action is relatively pared down to short but meaningful bursts, making it less cartoonish than a tango in cash or a bad boy. That's why even with the age spots, Beverly Hills Cop stands out as a stellar example of its genre. However, it is absolutely not appropriate for kids. Number 8. Super Bad. Wait, you changed your name to McLovin? <laughs> McLovin? What kind of a stupid name is that, Fogel? What are you trying to be, an Irish R&B singer? Judd Apatow's raunchy teen romp Superbad centers around Seth, Jonah Hill, a potty-mouthed porn aficionado who, more than anything, wants to lose his virginity before college orientation. His BFF is Evan, Michael Sarah, a mild-mannered Dartmouth-bound guy who's equally interested in sex, but not as brash about it. Thanks to a surprise pairing with his dream girl Jules, Emma Stone, during home ec class, Seth gets invited to a hot graduation party. Filled with giddiness at the prospect of scoring with really drunk girls, Seth offers to buy all of the party's alcohol. And that is where it all starts. Superbad is exactly what you'd expect from a Judd Apatow acolyte like Seth Rogen and his childhood pal Evan Goldberg. For starters, it's hilariously raunchy and ridiculously quotable. It's also a frighteningly realistic view of what 18-year-old high school graduates are obsessed with. Sex, booze, and best friends. While the bad cops are funny, albeit unbelievable, the film's at its best when it focuses on Seth and Evan. Number 7. Groundhog Day Don't mess with me, pork chop. <sighs> what day is this? It's February 2nd. Groundhog Day. Cranky TV broadcaster Phil, Bill Murray, and his crew are sent to tiny Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania to capture the thrills of its annual Groundhog Day celebration. The snowstorm strands them there overnight, and when he wakes up the next morning, Bill soon realizes that something strange is going on. It's Groundhog Day again. As Phil repeatedly relives the tedium of the same day over and over, he gradually learns to treat people decently. He also falls for producer Rita, Andy McDowell, working every angle to figure out how to seduce her. Bill Murray shines in this good-natured comedy that delivers lots of laughs and some honest sentiment. Funny and uncommonly sweet, Groundhog Day is just the right blend of comedy and romance. Bill Murray is hilarious in his usual role as the detached wiseacre. Remarkably, the movie manages the almost impossible task of making us care about this sarcastic man. Number 6. American Pie Well, we'll just tell your mother that, uh, that uh, we ate it all. In American Pie, Jim, Jason Biggs, is among the least experienced of his friends 
he hasn't gotten to third base, which his friends describe as feeling like hot apple pie. While Jim is busy experimenting with scrambled porn, and well, his mom's baked goods, he and his buddies make a pact to lose their virginity before graduation. That means they've got to meet girls, break down their girlfriend's defenses about sex, and convince their classmates that they're more experienced than they are. More than anything, American Pie exploits teen anxiety about sex. One boy, Chuck Sherman, Chris Owens, spends the night at a party talking to a girl and getting close to her, then turns around and acts like they spent the night having sex, much to the girl's anger. Then there are the pricelessly funny sex talks between Jim and his dad, played with virtuosic dorkiness by Eugene Levy, and the performance anxiety of the boys and girls trying to figure out how to relate to each other, or not among the pressure from their friends to have sex and the pressure from their parents not to have sex. It's funny precisely because it's uncomfortable. Number 5. Crazy Stupid Love You want me to hit on her? No, I want to hit on her, the one behind her. Oh. She's a total fox, right? Mm-hmm. You think she came to a crowded bar to have a quiet drink alone? Cal Weaver, Steve Carell, has been in love with his wife Emily, Julianne Moore, since high school, marrying her at 17. So it's no understatement to say that his world falls to pieces when she declares over dinner at a restaurant that she has strayed and thinks that she wants a divorce. Cal has no idea how to be single, spending his first few weeks perched on a bar stool at a nightclub he's passed many times but never had the guts to enter. The entire scene is so foreign to him until confident Jacob Palmer, Ryan Gosling, a certified womanizer who can persuade almost any girl to go home with him, takes Cal under his wing and decides to teach him how to take interest in both himself and other women. Crazy Stupid Love is surprising, engaging, and astute about humans and relationships and nearly everything else that matters. And that's despite the fact it hews fairly closely to rom-com and buddy comedy conventions. It's both, with a huge heaping of drama too. Carell and Gosling are fantastic, neither overplays or underplays. Instead, they seem genuinely comfortable in their movie skins, living their roles rather than acting them. Number 4. Borat You come see my film. If it's not success, I will be executed. Borat, cultural learnings of America for make benefit glorious nation of Kazakhstan, is a faux documentary that tracks the cross-country antics of Kazakh TV reporter Borat Sagdayev, Sasha Baron Cohen. Borat and his hairy camera-shy producer Azamat, Ken Davitian are sent to America to learn about the glorious country US and A and to make a documentary for their local Kazakh TV station. While almost everyone, real people, not actors, he meets on the way goes along with his contorted language and vulgar behavior, it's not always easy to tell where their awareness begins and ends. Director Larry Charles' movie is less innovative and submersive than it is observant, but it does show that laughing at ignorance constitutes its own kind of bliss. The case might be made that Borat picks on easy targets, rat boys, rodeo cowboys, hotel desk clerks, and smug southern dining club members. Although the government of Kazakhstan has protested publicly against the character, Baron Cohen's fans, familiar with his origins on The Ali G Show, appreciates Borat's gotcha comedy. Number 3. Ted She's making you do it, isn't she? Yes. I mean, but that doesn't mean we can't hang out. I mean, we'll hang out all the time. Yeah, but what about Thunder Buddies for life, John? I know. As a child, John Bennett makes a Christmas wish for his new teddy bear to talk and be his best friend forever. And it comes true. Many years later, John, Mark Wahlberg, is now 35. And though they're still best friends, the bear, Ted, voiced by Seth MacFarlane, has become a bad influence. Together, John and Ted spend their time sitting on the couch, making jokes, watching movies, and smoking pot. John's girlfriend Lori, Mila Kunis, likes Ted and loves John but would really like him to grow up. Usually, Seth MacFarlane's type of humor, pop culture references mixed with vulgar shock humor, will instantly kill a movie, but not so with Ted. MacFarlane has done what There's Something About Mary did. He has made an over-the-top comedy with genuine heart. As ridiculous and as silly as Ted's three characters are, they actually care for one another and their bond comes through. Number 2. The Hangover Nobody's seen Doug. I don't think I've ever been this hungover. What's on your arm? You were in the hospital last night. With their friend Doug, Justin Bartha, on the verge of getting married, friends Phil, Bradley Cooper, Alan, Zach Galifianakis, and Stu, Ed Helms, take him to Las Vegas for a bachelor party blowout. 
the three have hazy memories at best and a trashed hotel suite, and there's no sign of Doug, who's due to tie the knot in two days. Bill, Alan, and Stu have to reconstruct their evening and find their friend. What did they do? Where did they go? And why is there a tiger in their hotel suite? Even with all the concerns about the content in The Hangover, you'd have to be pretty hard-hearted not to admire the flair, flash, and funk that director Todd Phillips brings to the film. As a kind of booze-soaked detective story, it's remarkably engaging, and the trio of leads each brings something to the proceedings. Cooper's ratty charm, Helm's stoic uptightness, and Galifianakis' outer space musings work remarkably well together. There are some nice supporting parts too, including Rob Riggle as a crazed cop, and Heather Graham as an escort with a heart of gold, and the film's tempo never flags or falters. Number 1. The Dictator it is too round on the top, it needs to be pointy. Round is not scary, pointy is scary. This will put a smile on the faces of the enemy. They will think that it is a huge robot's dildo flying towards them. Admiral General Aladdin, Sasha Baron Cohen, is reviled the world over for his universal disdain for peace and justice and anything that remotely allows countries to get along. He's a warmonger who disrespects his own people and is more interested in betting the latest Hollywood starlet than trying to bring democracy to his country. And he's rich, thanks to his country's bounty of oil, which he prefers to keep for the country's use. But then, while on a trip to the United Nations, Aladdin's uncle, Ben Kingsley, gets him out of the way so he can put a doppelganger in Aladdin's place, one who will sign over his dictatorship to make way for democracy. In other words, the ability to sell oil to the highest bidders. The dictator is a guilty pleasure, full of jokes that cue both laughter and a small helping of shame. Make no mistake about it, General Aladdin is a nasty piece of work. Offensive, sexist, selfish, violent, though he apparently has never killed anyone despite what he thinks, and arrogant. But he's also incompetent and silly, and in a not so surprising twist, capable of having a heart. We would like to invite you to share your opinion with us. Do you agree with our list? Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye!